All right, today's edition of Can You Farm It? The series where we look at extinct animals and ask, could you farm that? Today's contestant, the stellar sea cow. And if you're wondering why, we'll answer that. Stay tuned. What is the stellar sea cow? It is a giant arctic dugong, which is the thing kind of like a manatee, but with a forked tail. All the manatees and dugongs still alive today are tropical and kind of like medium sized. But giant cold water sea cows used to be a thing. There were several different kinds and most of them went extinct millions of years ago. But one of them made it until the 1700s, the stellar sea cow. By then, they only lived around a couple islands up in the arctic. And once Europeans found out about them, they were hunted to extinction within about 30 years. Why? Because they were tasty. Whales and seals can taste kind of fishy because they eat fish. But thanks to an all veggie diet of just seaweed, stellar sea cows meat, oil, and blubber were very mild. And they were so loaded up with blubber, they couldn't even get all the way underwater. They just kind of bobbed around on the surface, grazing on the tops of the kelp forest. And that is part of why it was so easy for hunters to find them all. <laughs> now I used to think, if you live in the ocean and you can't even get all the way underwater, what a dumb way to live. You know, haha, <laughs> no wonder they're extinct. But then I found out killer whales' favorite way to kill other things that breathe air is drag them underwater and just keep them there until they drown. And that's when I realized I was so wrong. Stellar sea cows are geniuses, because if you're going to be slow and delicious, you'd better be unsinkable. So can you farm it? That answer is complicated. That thing we do with salmon where you keep them in a net pen and chuck food at them, I don't really think it's going to work with stellar sea cows because they're 30 feet long and they eat seaweed like a sea cow. So what really might make more sense is more like ranching. Instead of keeping them in a pen, they wander around eating kelp on their own. And when you need to find them again, you just round them up. Now the logistics of ranching out in the open ocean, very complicated, especially in the North Pacific. It does kind of help that stellar sea cow like to hang out by the beach, in shallow water because that's where the kelp is. They don't really go wandering around in deep water between islands. Plus there's that whole they can't even get underwater thing that would make it easier to find them and keep track of them. Now there are people working to bring stellar sea cow back. Not to farm them, but just because we think they might have been an important part of the ecosystem. There used to be several different kinds of giant sea cow grazing on seaweed and sea grasses all over the North Pacific, right? And now there aren't any at all. That might help explain why we keep getting these boom-bust cycles of kelp, sea urchins, and sea otters. Sea cows might have been really important for keeping kelp forest ecosystems more balanced and steady. Now here's the thing. If we succeed at bringing back stellar sea cows, managing and reintroducing herds of wild sea cows might look pretty similar to ranching, at least at first. The kelp beds aren't what they used to be, so you're gonna have to do some kelp bed restoration as well. It's kind of like managing a pasture. You'd have to make sure there's always a fresh bed of kelp ready to go and ready to eat before the last one runs out. And you have to make sure the herd can get to the new one from where they already are. You've got to tag them so you can keep track of which kid is whose and hopefully minimize inbreeding. And until there's a healthy population where you can afford to lose a few to nature, you're probably also gonna want to keep orcas and sharks and other predators away. So what do we call that? That's managing herds out in the open environment. It's kind of managing the landscape a little bit to make sure there's something for them to eat. That's not not branching. And that's why thinking through the logistics of how would you raise this can be really interesting. It can also be really worthwhile. It's one thing to bring a species back from extinction. It's a whole other thing to actually care for it, to make a place where it can actually live. And that's why this is worth thinking about. Okay, one last thing. Some of the early explorers took that sea cow thing very literally. We have a report that their milk was thick and sweet. <laughs> How would you even know that? Well, while they were killing off the sea cows, they uh, stopped long enough to milk a dead one, at least once. So sea cow dairy, can't say I'm optimistic. You would think the hard part is underwater milking, but I think that can be managed. The hard part, the real problem, is it sounds like stellar sea cow's milk was, like most marine mammals, really thick because it's mostly fat and it's really cold out there. So after you get it out of the sea cow, then what happens? It's not gonna flow through the pipes. It's gonna be like trying to slurp cold butter through a straw. And if you get it to work, your big payoff is now you get to clean up. You gotta get cold solid butter off the inside walls of all your pipes before it's time to milk again. Pass.